What you doing, Daywood Dreamers? You got Mathers back uh, with more of the Vitality Draft League. This is week 10. Uh, there's only one more week after this, uh, so this is the second to last week. 11 total weeks is week 10. Uh, my battle versus Eric of the Rocky Mountain Heavy Metals, aka Zero Ink Games. I think that's how it's pronounced. It could be Inqui or Inq. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, my opponent has a very threatening team. He's got Mega Tyranitar, uh, regular Venusaur, not Mega Venusaur. Uh, he's got Slowbro, Cinderace, and Garchomp, which are pretty, pretty big offensive threats. Garchomp also not that bad a defensive threat as well. Um, and I got my team here. I got uh, Scarf, Hydreigon, Banded, Blaziken, uh, Crobat uh, with Defog, uh, Magic Bounce, Hatterene, which might be one of the only time maybe i think i brought hattering maybe like one or two games before this uh galisopod which i noticed was actually very good versus his team and swampert um actually not bringing rocks on this i'm bringing yawn again uh, which did serve me very well in previous games and i think is going to do well here uh considering he does have a pre couple pretty good switch-ins i was thinking i basically needed swampert because it's the only thing that can kind of switch into things like cinderace um, but he does have a few good things to switch into Swampert, namely like Venusaur. Uh, so I wanted something that I could click on the switch to try to get a little momentum. Um, but Glycepod is super good. Uh, the priority is just, I think priority in general is one of the most underrated uh, win conditions in this game. Uh, so I have First Impression and Aqua Jet. Uh, between those two moves, there's not much that Eric's team could do against it, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, you know, tanks hits like Earthquake could probably tank a Pyro Ball, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I have enough speed to outspeed Slowbro, uh, and I hit everything pretty hard uh, with Glycepod, which is pretty cool. Uh, Banded, Blaziken also hits really hard, um, and Scarf Hydreigon is a pretty good speed tier. Uh, be able to outspeed Garchomp and um, Cinderace if they are not Scarf themselves, as well as Raichu. Which is pretty cool. I also have Crobat with as adamant with enough speed to outspeed Cinderace. So I hit Cinderace hits 370, and my Crobat's hitting 371 because it's awesome. Um, and I have Calm Mind Nuzzle on this thing. I don't really know what I was expecting going into it, but uh, it's it, it had potential. It had potential. I think I thought about putting Trick Room on it, which I think might have been better because I would have been able to you know beat like. Outspeed the Venusaur in the Trick Room, hit that thing. But I was worried about Trick Room with Slowbro and you know Blaziken and Crobat being major members of my offensive pressure. And yeah. Anyway, let's get into the game. Let's put it on slow. I led Swampert just as a kind of like scout out what he wanted to lead with. Because um, I thought maybe like a Garchomp or a Tyranitar lead could be coming out. Um, looking at, I mean, just looking at his team. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, bluff that I had Stealth Rocks as well. Um, which I don't um, But Raichu is actually kind of a weird thing. It's tough for me to switch into because it does get grass knot uh, Which you know obliterates my Swampert, which is my only electric immunity on the team uh, So I make a hard play into Hydreigon which can resist the electric as well And I'm able to tank the grass knot pretty well and I do have speed uh, So I hit the U-turn as he actually stays in I'm like, okay, he's going for a volt switch Let me go back into Swampert as he does go for the volt switch. So I'm immune to that uh, and I'm like, so here the question is, is he going to go for the Grass Knot again, or is he going to go for uh, the Volt Switch again, predicting me to either stay in or switch out, respectively. Um, and I decided to, that I think he was going to go for the Grass Knot, and I was correct. So Hydreigon gets to come in again, and at this point I'm like, okay, he knows I'm Scarf because I outsped his Raichu that time. Uh, so he should be fearing like a Dark Pulse that would probably knock out Raichu at this point. Um, so I go for the U-turn again, but he does decide to stay in and actually uh, decides to go for the Volt Switch. And I was like, I can't risk it with my Swampert again. I was like, the chances that he could go for Grass Knot there are actually pretty high. So I was like, let me go into my Hatterene, which has very good special bulk and can just tank any hit as he does go for the Volt Switch. So pretty good play, actually, in hindsight. Like, um, knowing that my Hydreigon went for U-turn, he knew that he could tank another U-turn and get a Volt Switch and get momentum and he does as he gets his Tyranitar in on my Hatterene and there's not much I can do about this uh, so I decide to stay in and see if I how much damage I can get on this Tyranitar as he just knocks me out with the Stone Edge see there I, I was talking about how I almost went back into um, 
Swampert again on the Volt Switch. But this does give me a pretty free switch into Blaziken, in which I can U-turn for free, which does a ton to the Slowbro. And Eric actually did not realize that Blaziken would get U-turn in this league. But that is, you know, in the DLC stuff, apparently. So that's the rules we're playing by. Uh, so Goliathspod comes in, and he switches into Venusaur, which tanks... Uh, which does not tank the leech life very well, but does is not too KO'd and does outspeed. Uh, so that is a big worry for me. I decide to go into Crobat, which can tank both the stab moves from this thing as he does go for the leech seed. Uh, so not great. His Venusaur is getting Black Sludge and Leech Seed, so getting back to a good amount of HP. But I have no reason not to not to click U-turn as the Venusaur is definitely not gonna stay in. So I U-turn out on the Tyranitar. Uh, and I get my Blaziken back in. So Blaziken, I'm realizing, is actually a pretty good offensive threat versus his team, too. Uh, so the Garchomp comes in this time as I just U-turn again. Why not? Uh, critical hit, which is unfortunate for Eric, but uh, the rough skin damage on my Blaziken. But the, it turns out the critical hit didn't really matter too much because my Scarf Hydreigon is able to KO the Garchomp with Dragon Pulse. Maybe he would have played differently had I not gotten as much damage with the critical hit, but... Hydreigon was pretty tough for him to switch into, so the whole this whole game is all about like having difficulty switching in. <laughs> uh, so here, I was like, "There's no way he's going for a Stone Edge or anything." There, I was like, "What is he up to? He's gonna like Dragon Dance or something, uh, or maybe even um, go for um, like a fighting type move. He could have like Superpower or something." So I was like, "Okay, I think Elisapod is a pretty safe switch in. Uh, I can tank the fighting type move, and then if he even if he Dragon Dances, I can do the first impression to probably knock this thing out." Uh, but he decides to just get the Stealth Rock up, which I'm also pretty okay with because I my two my Crobat and my Goliathspot both have boots, uh, which means they're not taking any damage from these Stealth Rocks, which is pretty great. Uh, so the Tyranitar is not feeling safe, and I'm feeling confident enough to go for another Leech Life, um, but it's still obviously not enough to KO the Venusaur. And so here I thought, okay, maybe he's going to go for a Leech Seed or something uh, to try to catch my Crobat once again. Uh, so I'm like, let me just call that and try to stay in this turn and uh, it does not work out for me the giga drain does 72 percent which is not great since i was expecting glycopod to be a pretty big player in the rest of this game um but i get my crowbat in on the emergency exit and this is a pretty good situation to be in uh so i believe i just u-turn no a brave bird yeah i was trying to take i was trying to take that venusaur uh and so here and now it's time for my turn it's my turn to forget about a move that's in this league uh, which is Pursuit. Uh, I completely forgot about it, but fortunately my Crobat is just able to hang on. I do have the boots, so I can switch in on the rocks still, uh, and I can just get my Swampert in. Um, so what did I do here? Yes, I clicked Yawn. because so I was like, there's no way he doesn't go Venusaur right now. I'm at full HP. He doesn't want to switch in. Uh, so I get the Venusaur with the Yawn, and I decide to go into my Hadragon trying to catch the Giga Drain. Uh, but he actually makes a good play there in Sludge Bombs, which, but with with that and the sand damage, actually able to take out my Hydreigon. Would have been nice if I if the sand wasn't up and I could have stayed there. But the other nice thing is his Venusaur does go to sleep, which is actually a perfect opportunity for my Crobat to come in and click Roost, get back to some good amount of HP. Because uh, Crobat's actually pretty nice; it outspeeds his entire team. Uh, and, and I was like, you know what? If he stays asleep right here, then I'm in a really good spot. And. He does, so my Crobat's back to full, uh, which means I can Brave Bird pretty freely here without worrying about putting myself in range of anything else. Uh, so the Venusaur is gone, um, but the Tyranitar comes back in, and I'm like, oh, what do I do? There's, if I stay in, he's just going to Stone Edge, and so I decide to U-turn as he does Pursuit one more time, but I do have enough HP where I can live the Pursuit. Uh, so I bring Swampert back in. I'm in a pretty tough position right now because Swampert is really my main thing to deal with Cinderace. Um, but I do have uh, Blaziken, which can take a hit from its range it's at. Crobat to outspeed, but it's very low. Uh, and Golisopod can do... I actually counted in the battle, it does 70% to a Cinderace, around 70% to a Cinderace. So I, I needed it to have... I needed to do at least 30% chip damage to the Cinderace, and then that was kind of my win condition. Uh, with um, with that damage on Cinderace, I Aqua Jet this, Aqua Jet the Raichu, Aqua Jet the Tyranitar, and I outspeed the Slowbro and get hit with like a Leech Life and stuff. Um, so anyway, my Swampert is in here. Um, and I think I decided to just go for the attack. 
yeah, Earthquake on the slow bro actually does a, a little chunk there, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and here, I was like, let me just toxic this thing, because this is one of the only things that could potentially stall out my team. Like, if for some reason my Glyspot isn't doing enough damage to it, or or something like that, or maybe I lose Glyspot too. Like, maybe I, I try to KO the Cinderace, but I don't, or something like that. Uh, it could be, you know, the end of the game for me. So if I toxic it, then that puts me in a much better position to let this thing get whittled down. Um, as he does scald crit and burn, which is pretty unfortunate for Swampert because Swampert was looking very good right now uh, with, uh, basically he couldn't switch into it. Like Slowbro was in and it's getting, to, and, it's, and it's toxicked. Um, and anything else that comes in is gonna go down to either a scald or an earthquake, which is really cool. Uh, but now, you know, I mean, still, I guess even burned, the Earthquake would still do enough for these two and would do enough to the point where Glycepod would be able to knock out the Cinderace. So, not the end of the world. It was just a little bit crazy, you know, crit burn. Nobody likes to see that. Uh, so, it doesn't, you know, it just makes me change up my game plan just a little bit. Uh, and I did take a little bit of time to uh, calc and figure things out, make figure out what plays I want. I needed to make what things that needed to happen. Uh, so, I did take a little bit long that turn. <laughs> Uh, which I think Eric was annoyed by, so I apologize, Eric. Um, so I'm scald. I get it. I'm just, you know what, Swampert is not much use to me anymore. I'm just gonna scald this slow bro. Try to keep it low as as low as possible. Uh, as he reveals the slack off there, but I think he realized now that um, the amount of damage that I'm taking from burn is also being, you know, uh, oh god, it's being done back by leftovers. So uh, he needs to attack me to knock me out. Uh, so he decides to get the regenerator switch out and sack Tyranitar. Since Tyranitar wasn't really doing much for him, I think everything on my team outsped it other than the Swampert. Or no, I mean, well, yeah, but Glyspot had priority, so it wasn't really doing much, uh, especially at 12%. So Tyranitar goes down, which is great. Uh, but now he's in a pretty good position to go into either Raichu or Cinderace. Raichu is pretty tough for me to switch into, so unfortunately that's it for Swampert. <laughs> uh, but now having a free switch, I'm in a pretty good spot. Raichu's very low, Cinderace is not going to want to switch into things, Slowbro is not going to want to switch into things, so I first impression the Raichu to take that thing out. Um, and once again, now he's in a good position, <laughs> uh, because Cinderace can come in and it's at full health, which means my Aqua Jet does not KO. Um, and so my game plan here, I had to think about it a bit. So my options were basically I could Aqua Jet this and it would do like 70%, leaving it pretty low, um, which means Blaziken could come in on a free switch, take it and easily tank a hit and knock it out. Crowback could also outspeed and knock it out, but then the problem would be Slowbro. Uh, the toxic damage would rack up, but I'm pretty sure Slowbro would be able to knock out my Blaziken and my Crobat before the toxic knocked it out. Uh, so it was a pretty important moment in the battle uh, this turn. Um, what else am I thinking about? Yeah, um, so I really needed Glycepod to beat the Slowbro. Uh, it was basically the only way that I could guarantee beat the Slowbro. Because um, I outspeed it, I can hit with a Leech Life, which gives me a lot of HP back and does a lot of damage to the Slowbro. Um, but I also need this Cinderace to take some chip damage. So I was like, okay, my best option is basically to sack one of these two, one of either Blaziken or Crobat. And I ultimately settled on Blaziken because Blaziken doesn't outspeed Cinderace and it can't really do much to the Slowbro. Um, so I decided to go into Blaziken. I knew I could tank a Pyro Ball from where I was at, and I do. Uh, but of course, Cinderace is going to outspeed Blaziken on the following turn. I'm not Choice Scarf, I'm Choice Band, uh, which is important. The, the, the damage I did with Choice Band was very nice, uh, and I wouldn't have traded it for Choice Scarf. But you know, maybe it would have put me in a good position right now, but didn't matter. Uh, so on the following turn, uh, goes for the Zen headbutt and misses, which was pretty crazy. Uh, and I'm able to get a little bit of U-turn chip there, which um, I believe does put him in range of the Aqua Jet. The sand would have been nice, but yeah, the Aqua Jet is then able to knock out the Cinderace, which is pretty big. So the Cinderace is gone, and now all that's left is the Toxic Slowbro which, you know, it's only a matter of time now. Um, I can leech life here, uh, and, you know, Blaziken and Crobat aren't going to want to tank a hit from this thing at all, but um, the talk, But I have three Pokemon alive, I have boots, so uh, it's just a matter of time until the, the 
the slow bro gets worn down and with the amount of damage that i'm doing right here with leech life you know it's just a matter of time uh eric does get a little bit crazy lucky here with the scald burn immediately which is unfortunate um and the thing is i didn't really mind the emergency exit there because i do have boots so like the stealth rock damage didn't there was no stealth rock damage to worry about like i would have come in with more HP than I had on the following turn, you know, if if need be. The burn was annoying because it made me realize, like, oh god, do I need to like really rethink about how I can beat this thing? Because of if my glycopod is burned, then do I do enough damage to this thing where it can't just slack off? But I think over time, the um, I would have done enough damage combined with the toxic damage, like racking up that the slow bro would have been gone. So I don't think it mattered. But Blaziken is able to come in with a banded U-turn and finish off the Slowbro. So the Boston Weasels get a win, week 10. Uh, and unfortunately, I do have to break the news that we are no longer in contention for the playoffs in the VDL Season 2. I had a deal with Aereo. I, was, I had to beat Eric, and he had to beat Ray for me in order for me to you know have a chance to get into the playoffs just because of, you know, have, other people had different records competing with me and unfortunately it didn't come down to me winning a game to make it in obviously if i had won a bunch of other games then i it would have been a much different story but it came down to this moment where if ario had beaten ray then uh and i beat eric then i think i would have had a chance to maybe get in there um but unfortunately, Ariel lost to Ray, which means that both of them are in the playoffs. Or it means that Ray made it to the playoffs. Um, and then it came down to if I beat Eric here, I think, if he was going to be in the playoffs. But I think he was in the playoffs regardless. It just mattered like which, what his matchup was going to be in the playoffs. So, yeah, I'm out. But I'm still going to fight next week for the last match. Uh, so this win here puts me at four wins and five losses total uh so if i can win next week then i can be five and five which i feel like would be a pretty good way to end things um you know had a rough start to this league but i definitely found my footing later on and i'm pretty proud of how i've done i really like this team and uh i i am excited to say that uh in my of all the pokemon on my team i haven't actually I don't think anything would have maybe there's some like i haven't calced all the, the ko's from this battle yet but luxray is number two and for the most ko's on my team i think or at least most ko's compared to knockouts that doesn't make sense kill death ratio i like i don't I, it feels weird saying death in pokemon but the times that luxray got knocked out has been twice and it's gotten four ko's and the only Pokemon that I, on my team that has a better ratio than that, I think, is Hydreigon. So, Luxray, showing its stuff. Uh, and I'm pretty proud about that. And maybe I'll bring him into the next battle if it's a good opportunity. Like, I, I do want to bring him. And I think it would, I mean, because I'm not, it's the last battle, I'm not going to make it to playoffs, I might as well have fun with it. But I do also want to try to get that win. So, maybe I'll bring him, maybe not. We'll see. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Keep dreaming. Goodbye.